is this the meme that's been going around of like the perfect Asian son? That meme has gone viral. I was like, man, who is this f***ing guy? Navy SEAL, doctor, PhD, astronaut. While also being a f***ing sniper. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's just ridiculous. That guy makes me feel like When I think about my life, I was a scared little boy. If there was a movie that came about this guy, you would never believe it. He has the title of Lieutenant Sniper, Combat Medic, Parachutist, Recon Scout, and Combat Diver. I thought that being a SEAL would solve all of my life's problems. I could not have been any more wrong. This guy is just like a real life superhero. He was able to get a hold of a dumbbell. I'm sure he comes from a great family. He smashed my head in with it. It's just crazy. He decided to kill us. I did my best to fight him, but he's got a gun. You're saying that your whole life you felt scared. This idea of a scared little boy. Do you feel any remorse for what you did to your father? My father came up to me and some of the last words he said to me was, I'm sorry. And he pepper sprayed my face. Then all I hear in the kitchen is, my mother screaming for help and saying, he's got a gun. So I got up and I did my best to fight him and get that gun. Fought as hard as I could, as, as strong as I guess a 140 pound kid could do. He was able to get a hold of a dumbbell nearby and smash my head in with it. And he was able to get his gun out of his pocket. He shot it in the air and you know, I remember clearly um, pleading with him that we loved him and that he didn't have to do this. It's not too late. You have the power to decide right now. It's not too late. In a moment of clarity that my father found, he decided not to shoot us, not to kill us. And I told him to go run, just run. He left the back door. In the hysteria of that, my, my mother was on the phone and called 911 and screaming for help and police came and I came back into my room and I noticed that things had shifted. I have a closet that has access to the attic and I noticed that furniture was moved in such a way to gain access to the attic. And I told the police that I think my father's still in the house and he's in the attic. So they they did what they're trained to do. They sectioned off the area and uh, confronted my father. And it, one thing led to another. I wasn't there, um, but shots were fired. We went to the police department. I remember going in and there were three cops to the side and the detective I talked to, he said, son, I'm Sorry to tell you, but your father is dead. And he said, I take it that this is not bad news. It, is this good? And I said, it's, I'm just relieved, sir. And he said, I understand, son. I had a lot of hate in my heart as a kid, being 18 and just so angry with the world. I was, I was different, I was, I was scared. I was a scared little boy, scared of the world, scared of relationships, scared of talking to people. I was definitely scared of my father. All I wanted to do as a kid growing up was protect my family, protect really my mother and my brother from my father. And I just wanted to get away. This idea of the scared little boy, I needed a reset button with people I don't know. My buddy Keith told me about the Navy SEAL. I had never heard what a SEAL was, and he told me with his passion about that warrior that does these hard things that no one else wants to do. There was something about that that drew me in a way I've never felt before. It called for me. My decision was made, I'm like, this is what I'm gonna do. I wanted to transform my life, I wanted to learn the skills, to develop the strength, to become a different person, be someone that could protect the people that I loved that couldn't protect themselves. It was my ticket to escape the childhood I was born into. And for the first time, I felt accepted. I never felt accepted growing up. For the first time, I was home. 
I thought that being a SEAL would solve all of my life's problems. I could not have been any more wrong. When I showed up to Iraq, I think it became very clear the situation we found ourselves in. One of my good friends, Ryan Job, was hit in the face. That radio call coming out from Leif saying that Ryan had been hit and that I was needed. Um, I remember going on the roof and seeing Ryan lying down in a pool of his blood. And uh, Leif uh, and Chris at his side and Leif was holding his hand and just saying, just hang on brother, we, just hang on man. It's hard to articulate in words what that day did. A piece of us stayed there that day, died with us. We lost two people that day. I wasn't there for Mark when he was shot and killed. The next time I saw him was in the morgue, giving a final kiss to his forehead. When I think about my life, I had a lot of hate in my heart as a kid. The littlest things would tick me off and I would find myself punching a wall or breaking something. When my dad was uneducated, he also came from a pretty terrible home situation. I think he did the best he could to live with those demons, but a lot of times he didn't have the mental strength. I don't mean to paint my father in a bad light, really. I, I, I love my father. I do. I was unable to say those words for a very long time. And I have forgiven him of the years of abuse that he gave. It took years for me to let go of that anger, to sublimate those raw emotions into good. I made a promise to Mark, Ryan, who are not here with us today, that I would, for the rest of my life, do something to leave a positive impact in this world, to make up for the good they would have done, to fill in that void, to take that level of service to a higher calling. When I was growing up, I had a picture of the Apollo 11 crew over my bed. I never thought I could be an astronaut. I didn't think people who came from my background could do something like that. Learning a little bit more about how astronauts have had the opportunity to represent humanity for good, learning about the impact that astronauts can have on our next generation. That's when I put my name in the hat, wanted to be an astronaut. That's one small step for man, one when I first watched Gattaca, it's a futuristic world where everything is based on genetics. Some poor soul who was born with inferior genetics but has a dream of becoming an astronaut. There was something about it. I identified with certain aspects of this character of just being the underdog who had huge aspirations but was unfortunately told you're not allowed to do any of these things because you don't have the genetics for it. And so he puts himself through excruciating training and procedures to fool everyone. He ends up being better at the job than anyone else. It's not possible. I'm here to tell you that it is possible. He is the perfect manifestation of service above self. He's very quick to put others' needs above his own. I would trust my life to him, and I'm very proud to call him my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest NASA astronaut, Jonathan Kim. Maybe I could reach out to those kids, just like me, who are scared, tired, who don't think they can amount to anything, who don't think they're worth anything, and let them know that, hey, it doesn't matter where you're from. If you get up every time you fail, you can amount to something and you can do positive work. You don't need to have it all, but you have a choice and the power to craft your own destiny.
these astronauts are prepared to propel humanity into the vast unknown, taking us farther than ever before. They are the best of the best. And they come from many walks of life. If there's something that important for you, why aren't you grabbing it right now? It's designed to do one thing, simply weed out those not committed to the vision of becoming a SEAL. You do not sleep for an entire week. You run the equivalent of multiple marathons while wet and sandy inside and out. This is called getting a sugar cookie. It sucks because the instructors make a concerted effort to ensure you get the sand on the 